everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. My name is Alexandria Jackson. I am the Assistant Director of Alumni Relations. And welcome to this special event on the past, present, and future of Black and Latino studies. I ask that you keep your microphones muted through our event. If you do have a question, please write it down in the chat. We will select a few to answer at the end of the panel. Uh, so we would like to start our event this evening with a performance of the Black National Anthem by Professor Jamel Hudson. Followed will be a reading of the poem of Afro-Latina by Elizabeth Acevedo. Professor Hudson. Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven ring Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicings arise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day be Gun. Let us march on till victory is won. Stony the road we trod, bitter the chastening rod, felt in the days when hope unborn had died. Yet with a steady beat Has not our weary feet Come to the place For which our Father sighed We have come over a way That with tears have been watered we have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered out from the gloomy past till now we stand at last where the white gleam of our bright star is cast God of our weary years God of our silent tears Thou who has brought us thus far along the way Thou who has by thy mind led us into the light, keep us forever in your path, we pray, mm -mm -mm -mm. lest our feet stray from the places our God where we met thee lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world we forget thee shadowed beneath thy hand may we forever Stand true to our God 
and true to our native land. Afro Latina, camina conmigo. Salsa swagger anywhere she go, como la negra tiene tumbao azúcar. Thanks to the rhythm, beat the drums of my skin. Afro descendant, the rhythms with the first language I spoke was Spanish. Learned from lullabies whispered in my ear. My parents' tongue was a gift which I quickly forgot after realizing my peers did not understand it. They did not understand me. So I rejected habichuela and mangu, much preferring Happy Meals and Big Macs, straightening my hair in imitation of Barbie. I was embarrassed by my grandmother's colorful skirts and my mother's ebroki ingli, which cracked my pride when she spoke. So shit, I would poke fun at her myself, hoping to lessen the humiliation. Proud to call myself American, a citizen of this nation. I hated caramel color skin. Curse God, I've been born the color of cinnamon. How quickly we forget where we come from. So remind me, remind me that I come from the Tainos of the Rio, the Aztec, the Mayan, los Incas, los Españoles con sus fincas buscando oro, and the Yoruba Africanos que con sus manos built a mundo nunca imaginado. I know I come from stolen gold, from cocoa, from sugarcane, the children of slaves and slave masters, a beautifully tragic mixture, a sancocho of erased history, and my memory can't seem to escape. The thought of lost lives and indigenous rape a bittersweet bitterness a feeling innate the soul of a people past present and fate our stories cannot be checked into boxes they are in the forgotten the undocumented the past down spoonfuls of arroz con dulce at abuela's knee they're the way our hip skip to the beat of cumbia merengue y salsa they're in the bending and blending of backbones we are deformed and reformed beings it's in the sway of our song the landscapes of our skirts the azúcar beneath our tongues we are the unforeseen children we're not a cultural wedlock they're too kinky for spain and too wavy for dreadlocks so our palms tell the cuentos of many tierras Read our lifeline, birth of intertwined moonbeams and starshine. We are every ocean cross, north star, navigate our waters. Our bodies have been bridges. We are the sons and daughters, el destino de mi gente. Black, brown, beautiful, viviremos para siempre. Afro-Latinos hasta la muerte. Yeah, I had a feeling that was going to happen. Just give me a second. Now I can't find where I was before. Sorry about that. Good evening, everyone. And we just want to say thank you to Professor Jamel Hudson for singing the Black National Anthem and that wonderful video of, of Afro-Latina poem by Elizabeth Acevedo that was played. And we welcome you. My name is Neftali Danier, an Assistant Director of Alumni Relations. And I have a privilege this evening to introduce our speakers and our moderator. Our first speaker is Andrea Gonzalez. Andrea Gonzalez is a 20 year old Metsia queer advocate and organizer for marginalized youth, organizing at the intersection of racial justice, gender justice, educational justice, and abolitioning since the age of 15. Andrea has always been focused on empowering, educating, and liberating her community from oppressive systems by any means necessary. Andrea is currently the Director of Operations with Youth Over Guns. She is also a community educator and has led workshops across the country about anti-capitalism, community and coalition organizing, and gun violence. She is a junior within the CUNY BA program, working towards a degree in social justice and a child advocacy, and was most recently featured as 10 Teen Vogue's 21 under 21 class of 2020. We welcome you, Andrea Gonzalez. Our next speaker is Malachi Davidson. 
Malachi is a Baruch student and is an English major and a Black and Latinx studies minor at Baruch College who loves music, writing, and food for thought. Malachi is passionate about education and is actively seeking opportunities that would prepare him for the role of an impactful leader. He has worked on the grassroots level with social justice organization in his community of Queens, where he worked closely with the neighborhood youth. He has worked alongside the Black and Latinx Studies Department at Baruch, as well as the CUNY peer leaders with the CUNY Graduate Center to sharpen his writing and create a portfolio. Malachi's love for education has led him to rethinking the ways that education functions in this country and has inspired him to pursue higher education upon graduating in 2022. We welcome you, Malachi. Our alumna for the evening is Makita Peters. Makita Peters is a youth developer by heart. She was first exposed to youth development as a latchkey kid in elementary school, attended Medgar Evers Beacon program in middle school, and then upward bound at John Jay College and High School. It wasn't until finishing her undergraduate at Brew College, majoring in public affairs, minoring in communications, and having extra time on her hands this, that she decided to double minor in Black studies. It was during those classes she fell in love with nonprofit world and wanted to work with children. It was during one of her Black studies classes when the conversation of racism came up and classmates were saying that racism no longer exists, is when she decided that her life work would be to work with black and brown students. Makita is a recent graduate of CUNY School of Professional Studies, master's program in youth studies. With her years of experience in youth development and the ever so changing times, she knows that being an advocate for black and brown children is more than important than ever. We welcome you, Makita. And our Last speaker is Professor Rojo Robles. He is a Puerto Rican professor, writer, playwright, and filmmaker. Professor Robles graduated from the University of Puerto Rico with a BA in theater and an MA in comparative literature. He holds an um, MPhil and PhD from Latin America, Iberian and Latino Cultures Department at the Graduate Center, CUNY. His research interests are located at the intersection between Latin America and Caribbean literature and film and Afro-Latinx cultural studies. Dr. Robles is currently a lecturer at the Black and Latino Studies Department at Baruch College and is at work on a book project about Norican cinegraphic works and intermedial archives. We welcome you, Dr. Robles. And our moderator for this evening is Dr. Shelley Eversley. Dr. Eversley is a provost, faculty, fellow, and interim chair of the Black and Latinx Studies Department at Baruch College, where she teaches literature, feminism, and Black studies. She's also faculty co-director of the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation's Transformative Learning in the Humanities Initiative at CUNY. She was most recently academic director of CUNY's Faculty Fellowship Publication Program and is founder of EqualityArchive.com. She is the author of The Real Negro, The Question of Authenticity in 20th Century African-American Literature as well as several essays on literature, race, and culture. Her editorial work includes The Sexual Body in the 1970s, both special issues of WSQ, a journal by the feminist press, as well as the forthcoming book, Black Art, Politics, and Ethics, Aesthetics in 1960s, African-American Literature and Culture. She is currently revising a new book titled The Practice of Blackness, Cold War Surveillance, Censorship and African American Literary Survival. She earned her undergraduate degree at Columbia University and her graduate degrees at the John Hopkins University. We welcome you, Dr. Eversley, and I now turn the program over to you. Thank you, Naftali and Alexandria. It's it's really funny because you said you were going to shorten those, those introductions. I was like, whoo. That was really great. Um, it's really nice to be here. Thank you all for coming. I know it's always a long day and some of us spend our days now on Zoom. So thanks for making time uh, to be with us. I see colleagues here and comrades from across Baruch and CUNY as well as alumni and current students. Your presence here is more one more example of the ways in which BLS is much more than an academic department. After 50 years at Baruch, 
BLS is finally getting a major, we will begin the long process of review that goes all the way up to Albany um, beginning this fall. BLS began because students, faculty, and staff organized for it. Its existence sparked the development of ethnic studies, women's studies, LGBTQ plus studies. And at CUNY, it also coincides with programs like SEEK. We are very proud of the legacy of SEEK, SEEK access and opportunity, the elevation of knowledge and its service to Black and Latinx students. And we will continue to do that work alongside them. The key features of our new major are intersectional and interdisciplinary studies, racial and social justice fieldwork, research opportunities, and experiential learning. The connections between Black and Latino studies is not only through its past cultural and intellectual intersections, but it also articulates important institutional and political connections that are not only informed by history, but also shape the future. One unique feature of the new major is a real commitment to the roots of Black and Latino studies, fieldwork that creates opportunities for students to apply what they learn in class to work beyond school. This includes community work, racial justice work, and practicum experience in the arts and business. In this fieldwork aspect, we hope to empower our graduates with the tools they need to build a more just future, especially as it applies to Black and Latinx peoples. We're excited about how we're gonna build this future. We not only hired incredible new faculty like Professor Robles, who will join us as a tenure track assistant professor in the fall, and Professor Karanja Carroll, we've also recruited more than 25 faculty from across the, all of Baruch's campuses, uh, schools, including Weissman School of Arts and Sciences, the Zicklin School of Business, and the Mark School of Public Affairs. All of these faculty will serve as affiliated members of our team and as colleagues whose teaching and scholarship engage Black and Latino studies, they will join us as we build a truly intersectional and interdisciplinary department that will empower our students to bring the lenses of Black and Latino studies into a range of careers, including in business, the arts, community work, education, the law, or journalism. Because we understand Black and Latino studies is global, we have plans to create opportunities for our students to engage short-term work-study abroad programs in, in Puerto Rico, in the English-speaking Caribbean, and in West Africa. We're also looking at foundations who can support opportunities for student research, field work, and experiential learning. And in collaboration with the Black Studies Colloquium and the Initiative for the Study of Latin America, we will offer all kinds of public programming that connects us with communities throughout New York City. You can find some examples of what we've done this year on our community page, and I'll share the link with you just shortly. Next month, we're going to team up with the Alumni Relations Organization again. And on May 18th, our colleague, Professor Regina Bernard, will help Baruch alumni celebrate Caribbean heritage. She will engage uh, Jamaican restaurateur Suzanne and Michelle Rousseau in a conversation about the history of Caribbean food, about food justice, and about women business, business owners. And finally, we're very excited uh, to build relationships with our alumni. Your examples and your advice are yeah, critical to our students' yeah, no, success. I, 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 we hope that you will continue to engage us either through alumni relations or more directly as part of the BLS advisory board we will form this summer. Now, I'm really excited to introduce you to two incredible students, Andrea Gonzalez and Malachi Davidson, who are our 2021 BLS Archival Scholars, and they have a presentation for you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much for the beautiful introduction, Professor, and um, we're just really happy to be here. So I'm going to quickly share my screen um, so you can watch the video. Stained by the voices and Black and Latinx studies programs across the country were born out of protest and are sustained by the voices and power of Black and Latinx youth. 
CUNY protests began in 1969 with CCNY students on the front lines. These students took to the streets demanding that their school committed itself to the study and struggle of colonized peoples on an international level. And the legacy of these activists and organizers continues to inspire the CUNY students of today. Don't show up for free CUNY. Get the cops out of the MCA. Get the gentrified out of the MCA. The revolution won't be televised, I advise, better be prepared for when that day arrives. No reason for alarm, unless you live without care, can't ignore all the signs and claim to be unaware. La pasión vive en el corazón de cada estudiante. Desde el principio, ha estado ahí esperándote. Si buscas una chispa, solo mira hacia dentro. Es un legado ahí desde tu nacimiento. El cambio que deseas solo se realizará con el esfuerzo unido de la comunidad. And even then, the things you want are never guaranteed. Remember those enslaved fought long and hard to be free. You say you're sick of living in a world few by wrong. We hope you are committed, have the will to remain strong. Porque cuando la marea te empuja y quieren que te ahogues, es el momento que hay que mantener el enfoque. Necesitas la fuerza para seguir alcanzando y se encuentran en ese movimiento uno entre otros que siguen trabajando. Nosotros los que luchamos lo hacemos por todos, porque el pueblo unido jamás será vencido. Our destinies are in our hand. We have control of this mold. Never too fond of taking chances, but I refuse to fold. There's not a fiber in my body that will ever submit. My eyes are focused on the goal and constant pursuit of it. But with your hand in mine, I'm confident in due time that the freedom that we chase could be attained. And these generational curses will cease to remain. Así que levanta la voz tan fuerte como es necesario. Change the world with your actions, change the world with your words. Professor Eversy, you may begin. Well, I, I believe now the panel will begin and I'm very excited that um, Malachi Davidson, Andrea Gonzalez, Professor Rojo Robles and our colleague Makita Peterson um, will tell us and share their comments and thoughts about the past, about the future and obviously the present of Black and Latino Studies at Baruch. After that, we will have a conversation. We'll have time for conversation and questions. Um, maybe you have some or suggestions about uh, what you hear and we'll be excited to engage you. So I think we should start with Malachi and Andrea since you just led us into this incredible uh, conversation with something about the history. Of, of Black and, and Latino studies at Baruch. And what's really important, I think, for I learned actually from your research was that Baruch College was once part of City University of New York. So some of those, those protests and uprisings that were at City University of New York in 1968, 1969, um, were really what would become Baruch students. So much so that um, the first graduate from the SEEK program in all of CUNY um, was a Baruch graduate. Um, and so Baruch has a very important and special place in the history of racial justice and in the history of access and opportunity at Baruch. So I'm eager to hear your, your take on the past, your experience in the present and your hopes for the future. And then we'll move into um, Professor uh, Robles and then um, uh, Makito Peterson. Peters, I'm sorry, Makita. I see you made it. <laughs> you sitting. So thank you. The floor is yours, Andrea. And 
Okay, well, um, first and foremost, I hope everybody's having a really good afternoon slash evening. Um, it's been one of those cloudy days, but it's been one of the nicer ones. So I hope we've all got to enjoy it as much as we want to. Um, so to go a little bit in depth about the history of the Black and Latinx Studies Department within Baruch, I think um, something really powerful to start off with is uh, something that actually took place 52 years ago. So on February 25th, 1969, the ticker, which is Baruch's monthly newspaper, released an article and on the front page of it was titled, Coromante Presents Proposals. In that article, Albert Anthony, who was the student president of the Society of Coromante, which was a organization of black student activists, was making a series of proposals, um, most of which were calling for the hiring of more black faculty and black staff, the admittance of more black students, but most importantly, the implementation of black and Latino studies as a major within Baruch College. Now, the Society of Coromante was a little bit off, they thought that this would be uh, implemented by 1972, but instead 52 years later, here we are in 2021 as Black and Latinx Studies is being inducted into Baruch College as a major. And I think something that's really been sitting on the forefront of my mind for this, uh, about this is what is the exact significance of this moment? Um, because this is history in the making, but what does that mean for me? Um, so for that, I had to really evaluate my identity um, and what I think that I represent within the community of Baruch. Um, as a black person and as a black man, I think I fit into a very special category. I think that my experiences are one that aren't often understood, but also aren't given the light to be spoken of. And I think that um, a reason why I feel this way is because of uh, the lack of validation that I think I sometimes feel and that I think the education system within this country has kind of shoved down my throat. Um, as a black person, I can say that within my 12 years of regular education, learning about my people's history wasn't very common. If I wasn't getting it from my grandfather or from my father, I wasn't expecting it to get it anywhere else. Um, and I think that that's a large problem considering where we are politically. And I think that that's why when black and Latino studies is being fought for back in the early, I mean, in the late sixties and in the early seventies, and it's still being fought and for up until this very day, the acknowledgement and the history and the validation of what me and what my people have gone through. I think that that right there is a sign for uh, what is possible for the future. Um, I believe wholeheartedly that an opportunity to learn about my history is really an opportunity to become uh, cognizant of the power that I hold. Um, and I think that as we get this opportunity to explore more into the history of our people and more into the ways that we interact within the society, we will get a better understanding of who we are as a people and what we mean to this country. Um, like I was saying, I fully believe that education is equal to liberation. And I think that when students who like me in 2017 enter into a college institution, um, for the most part, being the first person in my family, very confused, very lost, and not really understanding where it is to go, I think that for some of us, an opportunity to study under the interdisciplinary subject of Black and Latino studies can really offer a bit of comfort because it's something that may seem familiar at first, but it also offers a, a, a real prized feeling because as I, would, as I learned more about what was going on during the Harlem Renaissance, as I learned more about what was going on in Nigeria during the 1960s, as I learned more about what's going on in different parts of the world, I felt as if I was learning more about myself. And I think that that is one of the most important and uh, really essential aspects of the BLS department becoming something in Baruch that students can look forward to, that students know that they can go to to learn more information, not only just about the history of this country, because Black people's history is just as important as any other groups, but more so about the history of themselves. And I think that that is why what we're doing here today is really so important. Thank you, Malachi. <laughs> And now, um, Andrea Gonzalez. Hi, um, that was really great, Malachi. I really agreed with everything that you said. Um, yeah, no, it was just really, it was really wonderful doing this project with you. Where, you know, we looked at so many different articles and, and photographs and so many, so much like research that was kind of hidden and it was hard to find this information. And, you know, it makes you think like, you know, why isn't this information more accessible? Why isn't there more um, organizing for black and brown students at Baruch campuses? Like, I remember we found like a gap in information at one point because we just didn't know where any of that information went. And so when I think about having a black and Latinx studies program in Baruch, I just feel like this is like an opportunity to really reflect on our history and like you know that struggle of young people black and brown young people in this institution because you know we can't just like assume that everything was like I don't know 
just like, I don't know, pretty and flowers, because, you know, it was a struggle, like, you know, when we need something in our, in our community, in our schools, it is a struggle, unfortunately. And so we need to really pay honor to those people that struggled for us to be here in this exact moment. And so I think of, you know, us developing this program as an opportunity to not only, you know, make black and brown students feel safer on campus, make them connect with their history, make them connect with themselves, with their ancestors, um, but it's also an opportunity to make the Baru community as a whole get more engaged in, in racial justice. Like I remember like, you know, organizing things on Baruch campus was a little bit tricky at first because, you know, not no one really knew where to go. No one knew how to get engaged, but there were people like dying for these conversations because we see it happen in our, in our city every single day we want to talk about policing we want to talk about um, institutional racism we want to talk about the racist curriculum that was fed to us in the public education system we want spaces to talk about these things and we don't have it and so when we develop a, a program like this when we develop the department and make it a major um, we are able to connect with folks a lot better and so like, I'm just really excited to you know have this opportunity to like you know make it actually a major I want this for like you know future generations to really participate in this intergenerational struggle for liberation we have this so such amazing conversations in Black and Latino studies. Like the work of, of Dr. Carroll has really like radicalized me, inspired me, and has brought me to where I am right now because he took an interdisciplinary approach to this work. We were talking about Black and Brown young people and how they're uniquely impacted by this by this work. And you know, we talked about our ancestors and like religious institutions that like you know actually connect us to our origins. And I, I just want everybody to have the opportunity to have this. And I want someone to you know like actually apply this to their everyday life like you know if it wasn't for the black and latino studies department in baruch i wouldn't have realized that you know i could continue this work if advocating for black and brown students like as my major that could be something that i did and unfortunately we didn't have the major done in time so i had to like go to cuny va <laughs> but like i did it because i realized that i have a love for teaching and i have a love for liberating my people so i am really grateful for the institution uh, of, of baruch and you know the department itself because if it wasn't for like you know the radical education that I received, um, like I definitely wouldn't be the organizer that I am today, the educator that I am today. Um, and I just want more opportunities like this to be given to other Black and Latino students so they can also be radicalized and they could also realize how they can give back to their community. Um, so yeah. Thank you, Andrea. Um, we will have uh, some comments from um, Professor Rojo Robles and from alumna Makita Peters. If you all have your questions forming already, you can put them in the chat. I think that um, Alexandria Jackson is going to read them out and we'll be able to have a conversation um, after because we have we will have time for that. Um, so uh, Professor Robles. Yes. Um, buenas tardes, everybody. Good evening, everybody. Beautiful people. I'm really happy to be here. I'm really happy about sharing the, the virtual stage uh, with Malaka, with Andrea, with Shelly, Nestle. Thank you for uh, organizing and all the people behind uh, this event. Uh, it was wonderful uh, listening to you and it, uh, it ground our missions when we listen to students like you express such uh, with such beautiful words uh, the, the the importance of our discipline yeah the importance of our studies right uh, today I want to just uh, to complement yeah those uh, uh, beautiful uh, uh, these courses that were presented before me right to talk about something very specific right like how uh, we at the black and latino studies are like working towards the development of a new major and the development of new courses right so uh today i want to share like a short presentation a short powerpoint so i'm going to share my screen now one second all right and yeah yeah, so today I'm going to be talking about the present and future of Black and Latino studies. Some of the things that I'm going to mention uh, uh, are like part of our ongoing curriculum. Yeah, they're happening as uh, uh, this semester and uh, last semester. And some are, with that, uh, some are like uh, courses or ideas that we're planning for the future, right? For the future of Black and Latinx studies, right? Um, then... 
one of the things that, uh, and, and, and this is something that I'm, I'm, I'm really happy about, right? Uh, uh, something that we're doing is recovering Latin American studies courses. Yeah, some of the Latin American studies courses has been uh, dormant for some time, uh, but now we're like uh, 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 getting back to those uh, uh, wonderful courses that were part of the curriculum for a long time, but uh, as, as I was uh, uh, telling you, has been like a little uh, quiet for a while. Uh, one of the things that are gonna happen, and I'm really happy about this, is this is a course that I'm gonna be teaching next semester is Contemporary Latin American Literature. Yeah, that's a, a, a beautiful course that I'm, I'm really uh, looking forward uh, to teach. And uh, just briefly, this course examine uh, significant uh, Latin American uh, literary genres such as novels, short stories, plays, drama, and chronicles, right? Uh, of course, it's a literature course and uh, we will be concentrating on literary themes, yeah, uh, but uh, the most important things uh, is that we're going to be using literature as a way and also cultural studies as a way to understand contemporary and Caribbean uh, societies, yeah, as everything at uh, the Black and Latino Studies Department, gender, sexuality, uh, uh, race are all part of the discussions that are going to be happening in, in this class, yeah. And of course, also the idea of having a, an interdisciplinary perspective. So that means that also we will be examining critical essays, right? Uh, videos, documentaries to complement the discussion, right? So I'm really looking forward uh, for this uh, uh, to, to teach and engage with the students uh, next semester. Um, another thing that is happening right now and uh, I'm, uh, I'm sharing this because I'm also like part of the uh, curriculum committee right is the recontextualization of some of the, uh, of, the uh, of, of our courses if for for example uh, the course uh, uh, 4902 cultures and society Latin American and the Caribbean cultures and, um, and societies uh, previously this course uh, uh, was also like the the brother or, or the sister of uh, uh, 4901, uh, that is a, a, another Latin American Caribbean. Uh, but these courses were like divided in time periods. Yeah, uh, 41 or two was divided like uh, uh, it was uh, dedicated to colonial uh, times, uh, and the uh, and 4901 was uh, dedicated to 20th century and to the first century. So we decided to change, yeah, to shift, yeah, the the. Uh, the the uh the idea behind these courses and kind of like uh, uh separate them uh or like interrelate them through a different uh, uh framework yeah so 4901 is going to be dedicated to social sciences and 4902 and this is a, a course that i uh, help uh, uh develop the description and we're uh, we're in the process of of, of publishing it yeah, it's, it's that uh, this course will examine the yeah, artistic, literary, and cultural movement uh, of Latin American and the Caribbean, uh, depending on the pro of, of, of the professor and their speciality or their uh, intention. Yeah, when teaching this course, uh, it could be, uh, uh, it could have like a, a specific, uh, it could have a specific attention to indigenous culture, Afro diasporic, Creole cultural uh, phenomenon, uh, the uh, the stories, literatures of Afro-descendants uh, uh, during slavery, but also after slavery, right? 20th century avant-garde literary or cinematic uh, uh, movement, indigenismo, pan-Africanism, uh, uh, music, among other uh, possibilities. Yeah, of course, like current, uh, digital uh, art forms, media, and, and uh, again, multiple debates about gender, migration, feminism, uh, queer art aesthetics, and of course the environment. Yeah, that is uh, also like a, an important component that we need to pay more and more attention to, and its interconnection. Yeah, with the uh, racialized and colonial structure of our world are also going to be part of this class. And I'm also really excited about the new possibilities yeah, and the new iterations of this course, right? Uh, so those were the, the ones about La Latin America. And I also wanna share the ones that we're planning, yeah? Or that, are, uh, uh, or that we developed uh, this year in relationship to Latinx studies, right? 
Uh, one of them is the special topics. This is a course that I'm teaching, the special topics in, uh, uh, in, in Latinx studies. I, I, I titled this course Latinx Screens, Film, TV, and Video. And this is a course that has been like a, a beautiful experience of something like uh, uh, the, the group has been fantastic. Yeah, uh, they were like the pioneers. Yeah, and we're having a blast, yeah. Uh, uh, watching uh, uh, films uh, uh, from the uh, Latinx canon, TV episodes, videos, right, and having wonderful discussions. Uh, all of the films and um, TV shows that we watch are also like, uh, we match them, yeah, with critical essays and, and cultural studies essay uh, to expand, yeah, our notions and to expand, yeah, the, 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 the scope of what a, a film can propose, right? And what we do in this course is that uh, we provide a survey of uh, audiovisual Latinx work uh, to broaden the other, the goal, the, the goal is to broaden the knowledge and the historical and present day cultural contributions of uh, uh, Latinos, Afro-Latinos uh, 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 to, uh, to the United States, yeah. Um, we try to focus uh, uh, and in films and TV shows and medias and, and videos made or or uh, made by or about Latinos that uh, shift yeah the stereotypes that uh, presents a complex representation about uh, uh, Latinos Latinos Latinx people right and through the, throughout the semester we explore different audiovisual narratives. Uh, especially uh, uh, the ones dedicated to the major Latinx communities in the United States. And I'm talking here about uh, the Puerto Rican community, the Dominican community, uh, Central American communities, and of course, the, the Mexican American community. Yeah, again, yeah, the, the idea of the interdisciplinary perspectives are part of this uh, film course. So we discuss issues of uh, colonialism, neo-colonialism, uh, representation, and in media, gender, sexuality, migration, urban life, among other topics, right? And it has been like really fantastic. Uh, uh, and, and, and a thing that is also like uh, happening with, uh, with this course, and this is something that we're uh, in, in conversation is the possibility of turning this class also in a class that could have a, a practical component, right? And uh, and so the, the possibilities of expanding this class into a documentary uh, a production to have a documentary production module uh, within it, it's also like part of the conversation that we're having. And I, I hope that uh, this can be achieved in the future. So thinking about the possibilities of this course in the future, it will be to watch film, to watch TV show, to discuss uh, uh, cultural topics, but also to make them, right? To also like, and to share and have a public scholarship made by the students. Um, the another course that uh, we're preparing and that I'm really excited about and is very like connected, yeah, to the work of uh, Elizabeth Acevedo, the poet we watched at, at the beginning of the uh, of our evening. It's uh, uh, a course on Afro Latinidad, right? I'm thinking about uh, intersectional, uh, the intersection of different identities, yeah, the intersection, uh, uh, the, the identities of Afro descendants, the identity of uh, of being from uh, Latin America or having Latin American heritage and also being part, right, of the Latinx communities in the U.S. Yeah? So this course focuses attention on, on, on the invisibilized, yeah, our race communities in the Americas, Afro-Latinos, Afro-Latinas, Afro-Latinx people, yeah. And the idea, just like with the other ones that I have mentioned, is to have a collection, an interdisciplinary collection of theoretically engaging uh, sources, but also artistic sources, media, right? Uh, podcast, that's another possibility. And uh, uh, explore, yeah, questions of black and identity, uh, representation, transnationalism, also like to think about black studies beyond the borders of the US, right? To think about the black identity from the perspective of the diasporas, yeah, in the Americas, plural. And uh, also to think about the, the way Afro-Latinos, Afro-Latinas, Afro-Latinx people have, uh, have taken uh, ownership of their own uh, narr uh, narratives and um, present yeah, uh, alternative uh, views about history, about society, about culture, right? 
definitely this course uh, will address history, uh, uh, music, uh, uh, media representations, uh, et cetera, et cetera, right? So it's, it's, it's a very like uh, uh, complex uh, course that is looking at, at a complex identity, right? And that's some of the things that uh, we're in uh, uh, planning, yeah, within the curriculum uh, uh, committee and I'm, I'm really excited about, right? Uh, something that also has been happening with the curriculum uh, community is the is the, the new mayor, uh, uh, Professor Shelley Eversley, uh, uh, presented yeah the 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 ideas the other the the the, uh, the our intentions were it, and I'm really excited about the, the new possibilities about the future of Latinx studies. Yeah, but one thing that I wanted to expand on is like uh, this idea of the practicum experience. Yeah, also like precisely like uh, using our classes as a way to advocate, as a way to also to have students having uh, uh, experiences outside of the classroom, uh, working uh, with organization, with uh, 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 com uh, community organizations, grassroots organizations, artistic uh, organizations, yeah, and also to create a uh, work that can uh, go beyond uh, uh, a specific course and that can help, right, to uh, uh, create a network, yeah, of uh, uh, scholarly production, but also cultural production, and that can expand, yeah, the reach of Afro uh, Latino studies, uh, Latinx studies, uh, Black studies at Baruch, at CUNY, at uh, New York, and elsewhere. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> Thank you, Rojo, Professor Rojo Robles. I'm so excited we got to hire him, especially in the middle of all of this um, austerity, et cetera. And um, one thing that um, Professor Robles didn't say that's also really cool is that he will be, he accepts papers from students written in English or Spanish. And when you think about it, when you think about how many of our students and how many of you speak Spanish at home and maybe didn't ever really get a chance to practice writing in Spanish. And you think about the ways that being able to write in Spanish means that you can actually use that as a job skill, not just as a home language is pretty amazing. And so um, we are thrilled um, that uh, Professor Robles will be joining us. Um, and finally, but not least, um, our alumna representative on this panel on the past and the present and the future of Black and Latino Studies at Baruch, Makita Peters. Good evening, everyone. I don't even know how to follow up with that. That was amazing. I am slightly jealous that I've already graduated. I may have to get another BA because this major um, is everything that a person of color who wants to learn more, who is curious about um, where they came from without having to do, you know, um, the ancestry uh, websites to figure out where exactly they're coming from, right? This program or the way this is um, being molded, it's, it's allowing you to learn more about yourself without having to go that channel and learn who you are, right? And then identify with the things that happened in the past that has now transformed and made you to who you are today. Um, I, as I said, I'm slightly jealous because when I took this uh, course or I took these courses when I was graduating, it was a minor and I was only able to take three courses. So the challenge was trying to decide which classes I felt I was connected to that I can take as much information and you know pass it on. Um, and as I said in my bio, this was one of the reasons why I decided to work with students that were black and brown because there were so many things that I didn't know. And I was an adult working full time, you know, taking care of myself, um, having all these great friends, having all these networks, but I was still so ignorant to so many things. And this uh, minor allowed me to really open my mind and be able to receive information and to become more of a life learner. So I'm now able to share 
so much information that I've learned um, over the years. Recommend books uh, between Professor Lewin, who was amazing and charged us and challenged us. And, you know, even during that time, he was like, you all will, you know, get your master's and you all will be great. And I'm like, what is this man talking about? I'm just trying to get this BA right now. I just want to graduate. I don't even want to think about school. And it took me eight years to decide what I wanted to do to get my master's because I knew that I didn't want to spend time and money in something that I was not going to use. And I'm glad I took the time to figure that out because I have continued with CUNY. Um, as you all learned, I graduated last year with my master's in new studies and I can apply it to my work every single day. So it excites me to know that a major like this exists because now I can push my students to go in that direction. I can push their family members to go in that direction if this is something they wanna learn. And then also to just how to become advocates for yourself and for us culturally, right? Because we're all seeing all the things that are happening. And while the pandemic was one of the worst things we probably ever experienced in our lives, right? it gave us all the opportunity to, to sit down and to see what is really happening. Because I know in my bio, I said that, um, you know, people during one of my classes was like, well, racism doesn't exist. And I'm sitting in the class like, are you serious? Like racism has not stopped, it has continued. And even after that, people still felt like, no, people were never being discriminated against. No, these things just don't happen to these subset of people but George Floyd happened. And it was just like, ah, and now people are like, this is not making any sense. We need to do something all the while. Other people are like, well, this has been happening for forever. I'm, I'm glad you caught up. I'm glad you're here. And I'm glad you're present to know what's happening. Um, but what are you gonna do with this information now? And now we're starting to see how things are transforming and people are being held accountable and how people are realizing that people of color are amazing. Like we really truly are amazing beings. There's nothing that we cannot do, right? As long as we believe in ourselves and, and we continue to push and motivate people. Um, I wanna leave you all with one quote, which I learned today. So I'm so excited that I get to share it. As I said, I'm a life learner. I'm always learning something and I'm always sharing. Um, I was in a training this morning around uh, social emotional learning and I love SEO. Like I live, breathe SEO. I pump it into people as much as possible because it's important for us to know that we are humans and we need to treat each other as human beings, right? I'm not treating you as a male or female, you are a person. So I need to look at you as who you are and accept you for who you are and then figure out how we can coexist in this world together. But this quote that I heard this morning um, that was said by James Baldwin, it hit me. And I was like, oh my God, this is, this is what we're living right now. So the quote is, the purpose of education, finally, is to create in a person the ability to look at the world for himself, to make his own decisions, to ask questions of the universe, and then learn to live with those questions, is the way he achieves his own identity. But no society is really anxious to have that kind of person around. What societies really ideally want is a, a citizenry which will simply obey the rules of society. So stop and think about that. This education that we're learning, the things that we are gaining, right? Do they really want us to use it? Of course not. They don't want us to have the knowledge that we have. But with Baruch deciding to make this a major, where it is more than three classes, where you have the opportunity to network with so many people who are like-minded like you, this is going to transform the world. I'm going to have to apply. Michelle, you have to figure this out, how this is going to work in between work and everything else that I'm doing. But kudos to you all for, for realizing that this is definitely necessary um, and it's going to transcend the future. Makita, thank you for that. I, I, if, 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 if you saw my eyes go over, it's because Malachi Davidson is in my is in my upper right left corner. And I looked over when you started quoting James Baldwin because Malachi 
knows a lot about James Baldwin and he once wrote an incredibly brilliant paper on Baldwin for a class that he took with me. So I'm really <laughs> glad that it's resonating. Um, I know you're smiling. And so um, we have time. If you have questions or comments or suggestions, you should put them in the chat now so we can have a conversation. I'm also sharing right now, I just added um, our community blog, the link to our community blog. And you can look on that blog and you can see content from um, our BLS community. And our community welcomes everyone. While it centers Black and Lat Latino peoples and studies and ideas and contributions to the world, everyone is welcome in, in BLS, um, everyone. And um, everyone is welcome to visit our community page that changes often. And this is where you can find out news and resources and readings and events. Um, we post it every day for Black History Month and we'll do it again for Latinx Heritage Month. We'll do it for Caribbean Heritage Month and hopefully people will be able to just kind of come back, you know, when you're sort of reading instead of going to, you know, Love B. Scott or page six or wherever you go when you're eating your lunch scrolling, maybe you'll start scrolling our community page and you'll get to know some more about the empowering things uh, that our genealogy or intellectual paths have created for us. So um, please, if you have questions. Uh, Shelly, so I actually do have them. some questions that were submitted to us. Our first one here is how does BLS seek to engage black and brown students and teach them about their unique and shared histories? I'm sorry, I missed the last Yeah, Their unique and shared stories. Okay. Well, interdisciplinary work for, first of all is, and the way we talk about interdisciplinary work is, is thinking about students being able to take a Latin, Latin American, contemporary Latin American literature course or a film course, and also being able to take um, Professor Lewin's media studies course or a history course or political science course. Baruch now is in the process of making it possible for students to be able to even double major. So that student who came to Baruch to major in finance can now also major in Black and Latino studies in addition to finance and graduate in four years. Everyone is now trying to coordinate that. So it's really possible. So the future looks really bright. Thank you for that, Shelly. Um, we just Al, got uh, a Malachi question. Or Andrea might want to say more. Since we just got a question in the chat just to um, jump off of what you said. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what are some ideas uh, that you are thinking of to incorporate Black and Latinx studies into the business school curriculum? Hi. Is it mine? Yep, that one's for you. I'm not sure if it's my internet or it's mine. Am I? Oh, did you not hear the question? I think her internet went down just now, so we didn't get the part of the question. Yeah, I can, we hear I the can last part. See it. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes? Yes. Okay, cool. Well, I will say this, um, that the, um, the, the business school, <laughs> I actually did something similar to this um, for the Zicklin Schools Advisory Board. Um, lately, um, we've been meeting a lot to talk about the ways that we can integrate some, um, or I should say desegregate the business school program. One thing I'm really excited about is they're, they're talking about a practicum, the experiential learning part about Black and Latino studies, especially to school like Baruch, means that we need to think about how to engage that with the way people come here and thinking about business. One idea that we had was to um, create an, a work um, a practicum experience for students to be able to, business school students to be able to go into local communities, Black and Latino communities in New York, communities where businesses are struggling, especially looking to rebuild after this pandemic, where business school students can actually work and help develop business plans um, and proposals for, for entrepreneurs and for companies that exist that are struggling. We also thought about doing that in Puerto Rico, and I keep saying Puerto Rico because Puerto Rico is part of the United States and that doesn't require passports. Um, the flights are short and relatively easy and so many of our, um, our roots in Black and Latino studies at Baruch is about Puerto Rican studies. Does anybody wanna say something on this panel? 
I want to add something else as well. Um, I just wanted to reiterate the uh, importance of being able to take courses where the content that you are studying is your own history. I think that in that, that is a very empowering feeling. Um, not to take away from any of the other history that I've learned throughout uh, my career in edu as a student, because I guess I call it that. Um, but when you learn about something that you can see yourself in, that you can apply in, when you see people that look like you and communities like yours that have experiences that you even feel now, um, it's a different type of feeling. And I think that that's something that uh, a lot of people in this world have gotten the experience the opportunity to experience. But when you're in that position of that Black or that Latinx student, that's probably you know more likely than not, especially here in New York City, that's not something that you've learned or got to really grapple with while you were in K through 12. So when you come to college and you're learning about all these interesting opportunities and there's all these different kinds of business courses in psychology, and then you see over there in that corner, you know, that Black and Latino Studies Department, and then that subject is studying something that's a part of your everyday life. It's kind of like, um, how do I say this? It's, it's like the school is telling you that your experience and that your life and that what you know and what you see and what you live matters. And I think that for that, that is one of the most empowering things for a student to really be going through. Uh, and another important thing that uh, uh, I believe is important within Latinx studies is to like recognize that Latinx is an umbrella term that put like uh, many heritage into one uh, place, into one concept. The other, the, the identity of, uh, of being Latinx is being from Latin America, of course, but it kind of like, in a way it erases to some extent, right? The, 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 the particularities, yeah, the, the, the specific heritage of people from uh, the Dominican Republic, from Cuba, from Mexico, right? And something that uh, uh, within our department, we're also working to uh, keep that developing, recovering, right, is this idea also to pay attention to the courses who are uh, uh, particular, yeah, to a specific group. For example, this semester, I'm, I'm also teaching Puerto Rican culture, and it's very important to teach Puerto Rican culture from the perspective, yeah, uh, and the, the historical uh, developments, the cultural developments, uh, uh, specific to Puerto Rico, something similar. Uh, we have other courses that are dedicated to the, uh, uh, to the to Dominicans, to Cubans, yeah, to uh, 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 Mexican Americans, and it's, it's uh, that is something important for us, right? To to yes, to at times discuss yeah the commonalities, the the common historical processes, the 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 intersection of different uh, uh, national communities within the U.S. right, diasporic communities within the U.S., but also right to pay attention to a specific uh, uh, nationalities, a specific heritage, and uh, uh, look yeah and be rigorous about. Uh, 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 that that type of study, right? That's why it also like uh, Puerto Rican studies is also part of Latinx studies. Dominican studies is also part of uh, Latinx studies. And we don't want to like group everybody in the same place or kind of like all, uh, always like uh, to, to speak uh, through blanket statement. It's also like very important to be specific and rigorous about these uh, uh, interrelated identities, but also the specific of, 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 of specific uh, diaspora within the U.S. Right on, Rojo. Thank you for that clarification. There's a question in the chat about, as a high school educator, um, we're working to either create BLS electives or infuse existing curricula. Any way to have some connection with high schools who would like some support? Could BLS majors advise and or guests teach? I'm guessing, yes, absolutely. I can't speak for all of my uh, my colleagues and, and students, um, but I do know for sure that at least one of, well, both of the students who presented today are committed to educating young people. I also know for sure that my colleague <laughs> And Makita are also committed to educating young people. If you go to our um, our community page under resources, you'll also see some um, some some syllabi, um, and we posted those the public syllabi, everything from the Black Lives Matter syllabi to Equal Rights and Justice syllabi to Puerto Rico syllabus, all of those syllabi there, so that they're literally texts. If you're looking just looking for something to read or to integrate into a course. Um, and we'll, I'm sure everyone has more to say about that. Um, that's something that we're, we, we're talking about. You know, this year where we're all just working remotely, it's hard to, to, to imagine being able to go out. Um, but part of our interest in, in, in field work, 
which is which is the foundation of Black and, and Latino studies, is to actually put people, connect them um, with, with work experience for our students and also to connect us to future students who might come to Baruch. Um, I see our Dean, our fabulous Dean of students, Art King is here and his hand is up. Yeah, good evening and thanks for giving the opportunity. I, I, I'm excited about all this. And I recall serving at Towson University where I was um, on the advisory board of the, uh, their um, uh, Africana Studies program. And so that was a wonderful experience for me getting to know and helping them to sort of decide uh, sort of curricular activities and also programming activities around black history and so forth. So I'm excited to be at this institution now where I think that we have a fa fantastic opportunity as administrators myself to sell this program and to promote this program in ways that the students could see the value of this education, learning about themselves and learning about the history or, or, or the miseducation that they might have had. But also an opportunity for others who are not part of, uh, who are not Latinx or Black to all 